Hello everybody. So now we are going to talk about the um, equation that describes the uh, mass transfer by convection. And the equation is pretty simple actually. It's, it says that the flux is directly proportional with uh, the concentration difference between the two points where convection is taking place. So this is the equation. Na is directly proportional to delta Ca. And uh, the uh, proportionality constant it's called the mass transfer coefficient which is exactly like the heat transfer coefficient in case of heat transfer and it has the uh, or the symbol is kc and the equation takes this form that na is kc multiplied by delta ca which is kc multiplied by cas minus ca infinity so this is this is the equation uh, but there is one question that uh, might might jump into your mind now which is uh, we, we saw from the previous uh, video that the, uh, uh, the the factors affecting the mass transfer coefficient are more than the factors affecting the, the uh, or the mass transfers are more than the factors affecting the diffusion. Um, and we, we should expect more details in this equation. Um, these details should include uh, something related to the fluid mechanics of the, in the system, something related to the, the geometry, any, anything that describes the, the 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 effect of these parameters on mass transfer uh, but the equation just states that it's coefficient multiplied by the driving force which is which is not what we expect but this is actually because all these details are included in kc kc takes into account the uh, uh, fluid properties um, its density its viscosity its diffusivity it takes into account the flow geometry it takes into account the flow properties the turbulence or the degree of turbulence in the system all of these parameters are included in kc and that's why and this, this is important to keep to, to know this and keep this in mind because this is uh, the the main idea of uh, or behind the the derivation that we will do uh, in this chapter um, that is related to the uh, the the equation or the shape of the equation that describes the mass transfer coefficient uh, so uh, there are going to be a lot of uh, a lot of discussion uh, in this chapter and in the last chapter which is chapter 28 um, about the uh, the mass transfer coefficient the equations that describe it and uh, how the equation changes from system to, to another uh, from system with a specific geometry to another geometry to flow properties to other flow properties this will all impact the the equation that describes kc so this is this is a point that is important uh, to keep in mind and of course we 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 will we will uh, uh, see these these details as as we go forward uh, there is one big difference uh, and by the way this is this equation is very similar to the heat transfer uh, convection equation heat transfer convection states that uh, q equals h multiplied by delta t which is which is the same as here uh, but in heat transfer the equation is is simple it doesn't have any other details like in mass transfer so in mass transfer there is one more level of details that is not there in heat transfer which is related to the units or the 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 uh, the way we express uh, the uh, the concentration or the concentration difference <clears throat> we express the concentration by many ways depending on the units or the, or the parameter that we are using so uh, we can express the, mo the the liquid concentration in concentration or in mole fraction we can express the partial pressure the the gas concentration in partial pressure or in mole fraction or in, in concentration as well so there are many ways of, of expressing the concentration so the driving force might have different units but the, the flux have uh, the flux is always uh, moles per unit area per unit time so the units of n are always uh, are always constant or the say or, or the dimensions are always constant but the dimensions of the co of the concentration differ and that's why the dimensions or the units of mass transfer coefficient will change we will have different shapes of the equation depending on the driving force um, and for each equation you have a shape of k that is different uh, to uh, to make the the equation uh, homogeneous or to make the equation uh, right from the uh, units point of view so here if we have the concentration as the driving force we use kc which has units of centimeter per second in this case concentration is gram mole per centimeter cube so you multiply it by centimeter per second to make the units of k 
or, or of n gram mole per centimeter square second. If it's uh, the partial pressure, then the, it's Kp, and Kp is gram mole per atmosphere centimeter square second. In case of mole fraction, it was, it's going to have the same units of, uh, of flux, which is uh, gram mole per centimeter square second, because the driving force is dimensionless. So Kx and Ky are the um, mass transfer coefficients. So this is one thing that we will revisit in, uh, in the next chapter. Uh, which is that uh, this these two equations are the same uh, and we we only have k to be suitable with the driving force here uh, which is just a different way of expressing the concentration of the same of the same fluid so there is a relation between kx and kc between ky and kp and this is something that we will see later uh, but, but but this is one one more dimension in in mass transfer that's not there in heat transfer which is the difference in concentration which is something that we uh, we never uh, saw in heat transfer um, the uh, next point which is an important point again there are two main differences between convection and molecular diffusion the main differences are uh, one one of them we have already mentioned that the the parameters that affect the molecular diffusion are more than uh, are, are less than the factors affecting the um, the uh, convection and that's why we have more control on mass transfer in case of convection uh, than in case of molecular diffusion and this is this is a point that we have already covered before the th the second which is an uh, an important point actually is that the mass transfer uh, in case of uh, convection or in case of molecular diffusion can only happen in one phase so if you remember the, the, the problems that we, we covered before we have a system with uh, with the specific geometry we have boundaries you say that the flow starts from z equals 0 to z equals l and if anything other than molecular diffusion is taking place uh, outside this phase is not included um, in, in, the, in, the, in the convection equation. So if you have reaction at the surface, if you have uh, convection outside, th these are all another phase issues. They're, they're not the, the, the molecular diffusion equation uh, concern. So you consider these all as boundary conditions. You, you don't consider them as actual uh, parameters or actual uh, molecular diffusion uh, cases uh, because it's outside the boundaries of this phase. This, this is the main point. But in convection, you, you don't have this restriction. Uh, mass transfer in convection can take place between phases and it's still convection. So you have convection in the liquid phase for a species that's diffusing from liquid to vapor. So you have convection liquid phase and then you have convection in the vapor phase. So the convection is the same. I can represent the, the, the flux um, of mass transfer between the two phases with one equation which is something you cannot do with molecular diffusion. The same equation describes mass transfer in liquid and in vapor. Um, so this is a very, very big difference between these two. Uh, and this is the basis of, of, lot of a lot of designs that of, of, of mass transfer equipment. And this is, this is a very, very important difference that uh, we have to understand. And, this, this is, and there are many applications that are built or, or based on this, this uh, fact. And this is something that we will um, discuss in more details in chapter 27. So these are the, the main two differences between convection and molecular diffusion. Now, uh, what we will do for in, in this and the rest of this video is just to do a quick revision on the parameters and on the uh, dimensionless groups that we, uh, we, we should or we know from before, uh, before I mean from heat transfer from fluid mechanics. Um, and uh, then see uh, what 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 are, are the, the the meaning of these parameters how to differentiate between them if they have similar symbols um, but the point is uh, I'm, I'm I'm going to uh, do some some analogies between fluid mechanics and heat transfer mainly sometimes uh, fluid mechanics and I would like to make sure that all the parameters and all the terms that I'm going to mention are already understood. Um, so you have a good idea what they mean or you refresh your memory if you forget any of these things. So for the uh, parameters that we will, we will see, we have um, L, which is the characteristic length. We have velocity, density, viscosity. So they, they're all well known. I just want to, um, to uh, differentiate between these two, which is K and KC. So K is the thermal conductivity that doesn't have any subscript. 
And if it has, so, so if it doesn't have a subscript, then it's the thermal conductivity. If I, I mean the mass transfer coefficient, I will call it Kc. I don't know why they use the same the same letter for both, but I mean, this is kind of confusing. But to, to, to remove the confusion, uh, we put a subscript C 4K to make this uh, mass transfer coefficient. This can, this can be K, can be KC, can be KP, can be KX or KY, as, as we mentioned earlier. Um, the DAB is the diffusion coefficient. Sometimes the, the diameter is written in uppercase D as well. So the, to differentiate between them, we put the subscript AB of the two species uh, included in the mass transfer um, to describe that or, or to tell that this is the diffusion coefficient. Um, there is one other thing that we... Um, uh, that we uh, we know from before, which is the diffusivities in fluid mechanics, heat and mass transfer. So the diffusivity, the the, the, the uh, momentum diffusivity is mu over rho. This is for uh, for fluid mechanics. The thermal diffusivity is k over rho Cp in case of uh, heat transfer, and it's the diffusion coefficient in case in case of mass transfer. And for all of them, it is uh, or they have the units of meter square per second or l square t minus one. Um, so this is also an unknown thing. One last thing that we will mention here is the dimensionless groups. And the dimensionless groups are very, very, very important uh, part of uh, convection, either in heat transfer or in mass transfer. And the dimensionless groups actually are very, very useful because they have di no dimension. So it doesn't matter what is the units or what are the units that you are using. They are going to give the same output, uh, either you're using British units, American units, or, or SI units, whatever the units. It's going to give the same um, the same uh, output, uh, but one 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 important, very 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 important uh, thing related to the dimensionless numbers is the uh, physical meaning of this this dimensionless numbers. It's very very important thing. The the parameter can tell you a lot by just uh, knowing its value. So for instance, if I have for instance number which is the most famous dimensionless group for for at least for chemical engineers, you 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 know that it's rho v l over mu. Uh, Rho V represents the momentum. Uh, the momentum is mass multiplied by velocity. So this is mass per unit volume multiplied by velocity. So you can say this is the momentum per unit volume multiplied by L over mu. Uh, this is Reynolds number. So the numerator in a way or another represents the inertia of the system. How much energy the system has and it wants to, to move uh, vigorously. This is, this is what the numerator uh, is about. For the denominator, it's mu, which is the, the brakes, the, the resistance to flow. So if you have uh, uh, a viscous fluid, it's going to resist the flow much more than the, the non-viscous fluid. Uh, so the combination of these two will give you a meaning or will tell you something about the flow of the system. So if you have a big Reynolds number, then it means that the numerator is much larger than then. <clears throat> the denominator so you have more inertial forces than the viscous forces so this is telling you how how or, or it will tell you that the system is in a state of strong motion if you have low Reynolds number it means that the resistance is high and then the flow is is more laminar than it's turbulent uh, same for Prindle number I have the CP which is the heat capacity which is how much heat the the fluid can can keep inside or the the, 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 the the that medium can keep inside and K is the thermal conductivity which is how much heat it can transfer to to the other side so if you have big print the number then it tells you that the amount of heat that you give to the this this medium uh, a big part of it is gonna be stored inside it and the small part is gonna be conducted because this is what print the number says that it, it has high heat capacity high ability to absorb heat and keep it inside then uh, or higher than the heat that it's gonna uh, conduct and vice versa um, for, for in a uh, new new number it's it's hl over k we know no number is the, the dimensionless parameter that we we calculate and then we calculate the heat transfer coefficient from it but if you take a look at this you can understand something about the mode of heat transfer in the system so h is the heat transfer by or heat transfer coefficient the convection heat transfer coefficient k is the uh, the conduction uh, or the, 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 the thermal conductivity. So if you have a big value of Nusselt number, it means that the, uh, the ability of the system to transfer heat by convection is much higher than its ability to transfer heat by conduction, which means that the, the convection is the dominant mode of heat transfer. 
and vice versa so it's telling you something it's, it's not just a number it has it has a meaning it has it has a, a message that it's telling you um, we discussed by number before about the in the in the I think chapter 26 if I'm not wrong um, or 25 I'm not I don't remember so it's KCL over D and we said that this is the external convection resistance or, or convection heat transfer divided by the uh, the thermal conductivity and we said that the the if you have high by number it means that the 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 uh, conductivity is or, or the 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 um, uh, the mass transfer uh, convection mass transfer outside is much higher than the the diffusion it means that the resistance to convection is slower than or less than the, the resistance to molecular diffusion so if i have a high bio number it tells me that diffusion is the controlling mode of heat transfer uh, of mass transfer it's not the the uh, molecular the, the convection so so they tell a lot and this is something that you have to keep in mind that you when you see any dimensionless number try to understand what it's telling you it's not just a combination of, of parameters that is telling you uh, or, or that doesn't have any dimension this is not the, it's not it and that's why when we when we do the the derivations to get the the equation describing the uh, the the mass transfer coefficient we will get some dimensionless groups that are are not meaningful and we will combine them to get something meaningful meaningful out of them and this this is this is a point that has to be clear that the dimensionless group must have a meaning must have uh, a message to to deliver so uh, the uh, rest of this chapter would be it's like what we did in, in the first chapter in this in this course, which is the uh, prediction of the diffusion coefficient. It's gonna be uh, trying to get the mass transfer coefficient or find an equation to describe the mass transfer coefficient. We have four methods listed in the textbook. Uh, we will cover the first three uh, because the fourth one is is like due to the time restrictions, we don't have time to cover the the last point. Uh, but we will we will cover the first point in in. Uh, in uh, in details in the second and third case we will go um, through the, the equation simply without going into a lot of details of the solution because it's it includes a lot of mathematical solution I might do it later but for now I'm gonna uh, just uh, keep going with the with what we are doing in the in the course by just uh, discussing the uh, the the beginning of the derivation and the final form of the equation <coughs> without going through all these details um, but at the end of the day, we will we will reach almost the same output from from the three uh, things. But the, the the most important is the first one, which is going to be the basis on which we will do all the uh, or we'll see <coughs> all the the equations in chapter uh, twenty eight. So uh, that's why we'll go through this in 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 more details. So next time we will start with it, and uh, I'll see you then. Goodbye.